Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome my dear students, this is lecture number 5. In this lecture we will be discussing the two important battles, first the battle of Plassey and the second one battle of Bexar. Before going to analyze these two battles, first of all let us look why British interested in Bengal. There were many reasons behind the interest of British in Bengal. During this time, Bengal was one of the richest provinces in India. This was the main reason behind the attraction of the British towards Bengal province. From Bengal the British exported saltpeter, indigo, pepper, sugar, cotton, silk and candy crafts. All these exports from Bengal formed 60 percent of the total export of the English from entire Asia in the 18th century. This commercial potentiality of Bengal which attracted the English into this province. However, the regular contacts between British and Bengal commenced only in 1630s. It was for the first time the first factory of the English East India Company in Bengal was created at the Balasore only in 1633. This was the first English factory of the British in Bengal. Later factories were set up in different parts of Bengal including Hooghly, Kasim Bazar, Patna and Dhaka which became the centers of the British trade. By 1960, the British got semindari rights. Semindari rights means that the right to collect revenues of three villages, Sudhanadi, Kalikata and Kovindapur. Kalikata as anglicized name was Calcutta, which later became the capital of the British in India. Since the 17th century, the Mughal rulers allowed free trade to English East India Company in Bengal by the Mughal ruler on payment of 3000 rupees annually. The company was not required to pay any tax, customs tax. But the company's export from, from Bengal was around 50,000 great British pound in a year, but they paid only 3,000 rupees to the Mughal rulers annually. As we seen in the pre, one of the previous lectures, it was Mushid Kuli Khan who made Bengal an independent state. Once he became an independent ruler of Bengal, he did not promote the special privileges of English East India Company because it was a heavy loss 
to the Royal Treasury of Bengal. It also created unhealthy competition between the English East India Company and the local merchants in Bengal. It embittered the relationship between Mushid Kuli Khan and the British. After the death of Alwardi Khan, Siraj Daula became the next Nawab of Bengal. In 1756, Siraj Daula became the Nawab, but his accession to the throne of Bengal as the Nawab was disputed by his aunt Gesidi Begum of Dhaka and his cousin Shaukat Jeng of Purnia. They did not like the accession of Siraj Daula to the position of Nawab in Bengal. In addition to his aunt and cousin, there was a group in the court who opposed Siraj's accession to the throne in Bengal. This group included Jagat Seth, he was a banger, Umit Chand, Raj Ballav, Rai Durlav and Mirjafar. Mirjafar was the commander in chief of the Siraj Daula's forces. What relations did exist between Siraj Daula and English East India Company? In addition to the serious internal dissensions, the growing commercial activity of the English East India Company also posed a great threat to the position of Nawab of Bengal, Siraj Daula. As you know, the conflict between English East India Company and the Nawab of Auth was not a something new. The relations between these two groups embittered even during the period of Mushud Kuli Khan and Alwardi Khan. But certain development took place during the period of Siraj Daula which embittered the relationship between the British and Nawab Siraj Daula. What were these new developments which embittered the relationship between Nawab of Bengal and the British? One was fortification around Calcutta without permission from Nawab. Nawab did not allow the British to fortify Calcutta. The English decided to fortify Calcutta in order to keep the attacks away from rival Europeans like Dutch and the French. The British decided to fortify their belongings. Secondly, the misuse of company's trade privilege. This trade privilege or the Staga was granted only to English East India Company, but by using this pass the private for the private trade the company officials used it. The Dastaga was given only to the English East India Company and the trade made by English East India Company was alone exempted from customs free. But this pass or popularly known as Dastaga duty free pass or Dastaga it began to be used by company officials for the purchase of products from Bengal without paying customs taxes. This embittered the relationship between British and Siraj Daula. Another reason was that Krishna Das he took away immense wealth of Nawab 
Suraj Daula against his will. This Krishna Daghadas was given protection by the English. He was the son of Raj Bellav. He was given, Krishna Das was given shelter by the English even after he had taken away immense wealth of Suraj, the Nawab of Bengal. These were the reasons which embittered the relationship between the Nawab of Bengal and the British. On the other hand, the English East India Company feared that Suraj Daula would cut down the trade privileges granted to them by the Mughal rulers in alliance with the French in Bengal. This was the fear on the part of the English East India Company. Immediate cause of conflict. The immediate cause of conflict as you have been told earlier, the fortification of Fort William at Calcutta. It had already been fortified, but strengthening, strengthening of the fortification of Fort William at Calcutta was one of the main reasons of the conflict between Suraj Daula and the British. Despite repeated request, the British did not desist from the strengthening of the fortification. The English continued to strengthen the fortification at Fort William in Calcutta. Siraj saw it that his authority was floated even his own dominions. He considered it as an encroachment upon the sovereignty of the Nava of Bengal and he decided to take a strong action against the British. He besieged the Fort William, the headquarters of the British in Calcutta on 15 June 1756. After a show of resistance, Fort William was surrendered to Nawab of Auth. Governor Roger Drake and other important officials escaped from Fort William through the back door down the river Googly. After the capture of Fort William by Nawab Siraj Daula, it was placed under the charge of an official Manik Chand and then Suraj Daula returned to his capital Mushidabad. Coincided with his attack on Fort William, black hole tragedy is memorable even though it was an insignificant event. This black hole tragedy goes that around 146 Englishmen including women and children were shut up in a small room on 19 June 1756. When the room was opened in the next morning, there were only 23 survivors, all others were died. This tragedy came into known as black hole tragedy. But this incident was not mentioned even the contemporary historian who lived during this period that Ghulam Hussain. It was not Siraj Daula, but some other subordinate officials who had been shut the Englishman in the small room. But the fault on the part of this Suraj Daula was that he had failed to take effective action against the official responsible for this tragedy. Once the news of the capture 
of Fort William reached Madras. A powerful English force under the leadership of Robert Clive was sent to Calcutta. From Madras, Robert Clive reached to Calcutta and after bribing the officer in charge of Fort William, Manik Chand, Robert Clive got back Fort William. In February 1757, a treaty was entered into between the Nawab Siraj Daula and the English. This treaty came into known as Ali Nagar. After getting back Fort William, Siraj Daula changed the name to Ali Nagar from Calcutta. Under this treaty of Ali Nagar, signed between Robert Clive and Siraj Daula in 1757, the English got their former trade privileges as well as the right to fortify Calcutta. Now, the conspiracy, what conspiracy Robert Clive made? Robert Clive considered Siraj Daula as a threat to the British in Bengal. So, he conspired to eliminate Siraj Daula once for all. He entered into conspiracy with the rival group in the Siraj Daula's court. It included Mir Jafar. He was the commander in chief of the Siraj armed forces. He had a liking to become the Nawab of Bengal and he was awaiting an opportunity to become the Nawab of Bengal. It was provided with the intervention of the British. Rai Durlap Jagat said he belonged to a powerful banker's house in Bengal and Omi Chand, he was an intermediary. The, they conspired to make Mirja for as the next Nawab who would provide all privileges to the British. Siraj was considered as a threatener to the British interest in Bengal. So, they decided to replace Siraj Daula by Murjafar. Murjafar also agreed to compensate the losses suffered by the British during the attack made by Siraj Daula on Fort William, now the Battle of Plassey. The English force under Robert Clive proceeded to Murshidabad, the capital of Nawab, to fight against the Nawab. The forces of Nawab and the English met at the historic battlefield of Plassey on 23rd June 1757. Who did lead the forces of the Nabab? It was none other than Murjafar. He was the commander in chief of the armed forces of Nabab. At the battlefield, Murjafar told the Nabab to go back to Murshidabad and he would take in charge of these affairs. On hearing this, Siraj Daula returned to Murshidabad. At the battlefield, Murjafar was declared as the winner after defeating a small army of the French. After defeating the small army, Murshidabad, where to 
Murjafar proceeded. Once he reached Murshidabad, he declared as the Nawab of Bengal. Siraj Dawla was captured and he was put to death by Muran. He was the son of Murjafar. Thus, the period of Siraj Dawla came to an end. What was the importance of the Battle of Plassey? We are going to look into the importance of Battle of Plassey. The victory of Mirjafar and English was decided even before the actual war was fought. It was the conspiracy between the English and Mirjafar which made the English victorious. No actual war was fought at the battle. It was the conspiracy which made the British victorious in this battle. It was not the military superiority. Had Mirjafar been remained loyal, what would be the outcome? The outcome might have been different. Had Mirjafar, the commander in chief of the armed forces of Nawab Siraj Dawla, remained loyal and fought against the British, the result would have been different. Only Mirmudan and Mohanlal, they remained loyal to the Nawab of Bengal and fought in this battle of Plassey. With the victory of battle of Plassey, the actual powers of Bengal went into the hands of the British. The English got vast resources of Bengal. As you have been told earlier that Bengal was one of the richest provinces and large chunk of the products the British sent from Asia was collected from Bengal. Immediately after the Battle of Plassey, the company sent 8 lakh Great British Pound in silver coins to Britain. Where from did the company got this money? The company got this money from Bengal. This vast resources available in Bengal helped the British to conquer other parts of the country, especially Deccan and Mysore, as well as Marathas, with whom the company was in constant struggle. The English monopolized trade and commerce in Bengal. The Dutch and the French lost their positions in Bengal with the Battle of Plassey. The French, who were defeated in 1757, never recovered. The Dutch was completely defeated by Robert Clive at Bedara in 17. 59. Both French and Dutch did not recover from these losses. Bengal was passed fully into the hands of the English. Murjafar became the new Nabab, but he be began to face a number of challenges once he became the Nabab. Bengal. What were the challenges Murjafar began to face once he became the Nabab of Bengal? The actual administration was not in the hands of the Murjafar. He was a mere puppet, acted according to the wishes of the British. He became a mere puppet in the hands of the British. 
In addition to that, he began to face following problems. One, Raja Ram Singha of Mitnapur and Kisir Ali Khan of Purnia, both of them refused to accept Murjafar as the rightful Nawab of Bengal. Then, because of the financial problems faced by Murjafar, he was not in a position to pay salary to the soldiers regularly. All the monies were to be paid to the British. Their demands were increasing day by day. In addition to that, there was an attempt by the son of Mughal ruler who later became Shah Alam II. Shah Alam II tried to capture Bengal as you have been told earlier, the financial position of Bengal was very weak. Mirjafar failed to meet the everyday increasing demands of the British. Since Mirjafar was incapable to meet the demands of the British, the British thought to change Murjafar and to find a new Nabab. It was further strengthened by the question of succession with the death of Muran. Muran, who killed Siraj Dawla, you have been told earlier, Muran was the son of Murjafar, he died. It created a conflict over the succession. Who would come into power after the death of Murjafar? Murja, after the death of Murjafar's son, Muran's death. The fight for the next Nawabship was between two persons who were the one Muran's son and another one was Mirkasi. He was the son-in-law of Murjafar. It was during this time a new governor was appointed to Bengal. It was Vansi Tat. Vansi Tat became the governor of Bengal. Once he became the governor of Bengal, he took the side of Mirkasi. He supported the candidature of Mirkasi to the post of Nawabship of Bengal. Mirkasim also agreed to pay finance for the services rendered by English in becoming the Nawab of Aut, sorry, the Nawab of Bengal. Murjavar had already lost the confidence of the British. Murjafar's soldiers were not getting salary regularly. It is helped the Britishers to remove Murjafar immediately. The Britishers supported the rebellion of the soldiers of Murjafar against him for not getting salary regularly. And the Murjafar was forced to step down from the post of Nawab in Bengal. Now, Mirkasim became the next Nawab of Bengal. Mirkasim also became the Nawab of Bengal on the same path as Mirjafar had done. What was the path? It was through conspiracy. Siraj Dawla was killed through conspiracy and Mirjafar came into power. Mirjafar was removed from the post of Nawab of Bengal through conspiracy by Mirkasim. Both Mirjafar and Mirkasim became the Nawabs of Bengal through conspiracy. 
once he became the nawab of bengal he paid large sums of money to the british as a reward for the support rendered by the british to him in becoming the nawab of bengal in addition to large sums of money he also surrendered three districts of bengal bardwan mitnapur and chittagong these three districts of bengal were surrendered by mir qasim to the british in order to keep a distance from the british mir qasim shifted his capital from murshidabad to mangar he also reorganized the bureaucracy by the men of his own choice the higher echelons of administration began to be filled with the men of his own choice he also remodeled and strengthened efficiency and skill of the army these were the changes introduced by mir qasim once he became the nawab of bengal no doubt first a few months passed off peacefully without any major dispute between the nawab of bengal and mir qasim but slowly the situation changed the relationship between mir qasim and the british embittered what were the reasons behind the dispute between mir qasim and the british have a look into this ram narayan he was the deputy governor of bihar he had been asked by mir qasim to submit his accounts despite repeated request ram narayan had failed to submit his accounts before mir qasim ram narayan was supported by the english officials in it the second reason was that misuse of companies dustaka or duty free pass as you have been told earlier this duty free pass or dustaka was granted only to the english east india company but this dustaka or duty free pass began to be used by the company officials for their private trade by using this duty pass they were exempted from the payment of customs taxes and they sent these items from india to britain one think since these company officials were exempted unofficially from the payment of customs taxes the local merchants were required to pay it created an unequal competition between company officials and local merchants in bengal in addition to that it also created loss of revenue to the treasury of bengal the company officials totally neglected the officials of the nawab these company officials did not pay any respect to the orders or the commands of the officials of the nawab in addition to that the company officials were forced the merchants to sell the products at low prices so that the company officials could maximize their profit in addition to the non 
payment of customs taxes by using the Staga or duty free pass. These company officials also forced the merchants to sell the products at low prices. Milk Kasim petitioned all these to the governor once it touched, but it is no avail. The governor did not take these complaints seriously. When Mir Qasim failed to meet the expectations of the British, they began to search for new Nawab. But Mir Qasim was not ready to surrender before the British, as Mir Jafar. Mir Jafar easily surrendered and the British was able to easily remove Mir Kasi, uh, Mir Jafar, easily they removed Mir Jafar from the post of Nawab. But Mir Kasim was not ready to surrender before the British easily. He engaged in a series of battle with the British, but in all these battles Mir Kasim failed. Following which Mir Qasim, Mir Qasim escaped from Bengal to Aut in 1763. Once he reached Aut, he formed an alliance with Shuja Uddawla. He was the Nawab of Aut. And Shah Alam II, he was the Mughal emperor. These three groups, Mirkazi, Shujaud Dawla of Aut, and Shah Alam II, the Mughal emperor, these three met together against the British. The three combined armies of Shujaud Dawla, Mir Qasim and Shah Alam II met the British force on the historic battlefield of Bexar on 22nd October 1764. What was the outcome? In this battle, the British emerged victorious, defeating three powerful forces in the country. The British defeated the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II, Shujaud Dawla, and Mir Qasim. All of the three forces were defeated at the hands of the British. The number of soldiers were less as far as British was concerned, but the army of the British was well trained, well maintained, well recruited and had the supply of modern weaponry. But with regard to Indian forces led by Shah Alam, Mir Qasim or Shujaud Dawla did not have the advantage of modern weaponry. Even though their numbers were high, they outnumbered the British forces, but they did not have the modern weaponry nor did they well disciplined. There was a difference between Battle of Plassey and Battle of Bexar. What was this difference? As you have seen earlier, the Battle of Plassey did not demonstrate the military superiority of the British, but it was a mere conspiracy. It was the conspiracy which made the British victorious. It was the conspiracy which made 
Mirja for the Nawab of Bengal, but compared it to it, the Battle of Bexar demonstrated the military superiority of the British, not a conspiracy, was due to the military superiority of the British, a powerful and a disciplined army with the modern weaponry, they could easily defeat the Indian forces. Secondly, if the Battle of Plassey made the British masters over Bengal, the Battle of Bexar made them a great power in North India. The British was it content in future with Mysore and Maratha forces in South India and Western India. But in North India, they defeated even the Mughal ruler Shah Alam II, it gave complete control to British over Bengal. It was not a mere victory over the Nawab of Bengal Mirkasi, but also Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II and the Nawab of Auth. All the three forces were combinedly defeated by the British. What did happen after the Battle of Bexar? After the Battle of Bexar, Mirjafar was again brought back as the Nawab of Bengal. Before becoming the Nawab of Bengal, Mirjafar had agreed to surrender the three districts, Mitnapur, Burdwan and Chittagong to the English for the maintenance of the army. He also permitted duty free trade in Bengal except a duty of 2 percent on salt. The English was also required to pay a 2 percent tax on the purchase of salt. But due to bad health, Mirjafar was not in a position to rule for a long time. Immediately he died, return of Robert Clive. Robert Clive who masterminded the Battle of Plassey. He returned as the governor of Bengal in 1765. As you have been told earlier, Murjafar could not rule long. He died soon. After the death of Murjafar, Nisamud Daula was appointed as the next Nawab of Bengal. A treaty was ended between Nisamud Daula and the British on 20 February 1765. What was the main term of this treaty? Under this treaty, the Nawab was required to disband his army. So, the Nawab became powerless by disbanding his army. But the real administration was not carried out by the Nawab, but an officer called Naib Subedar, in whom vested the actual powers. Naib Subedar was appointed and removed by the British. One of the important treaty relating to the Battle of Bexar was Treaty of Allahabad. In 1765, this treaty was signed in 1765. Who were the signatories of this treaty? 
the treaty was signed between Shah Alam second and Robert Clive. Shah Alam second was the Mughal ruler and he was defeated in the battle of Bexar. And it was due, due to this failure Shah Alam was required to enter into a treaty with Robert Clive. Under this treaty signed between Shah Alam II and Robert Clive in 1765, Shah Alam II granted the Diwani right. Diwani right means the right to collect revenues from Bengal, Bihar and Orissa. Now, with this treaty, the collection of revenue by the British got legalized, it got legal status. In return of granting the Diwani rights of Bengal, Bihar and Orissa, the British agreed to give Shah Alam II a subsidy of 26 lakh rupees and the two district of Kora and Allahabad. These two districts would be given to Shah Alam II. Thirdly, nextly, the emperor would reside the Allahabad fort for six years as a virtual prisoner of the British. These were the terms of the treaty of Allahabad entered into between Shah Alam second and Robert Clive. And in addition to Shah Alam second, the Nawab of Auth, he also joined with Murkasi against the British and got defeated. Shuja Udawla was made to pay a war indemnity of 5 million rupees to the company. Now, we are going to analyze what did lead to the political transformation in Bengal. First of all, the private interest of the English East India Company, it was one of the main reasons behind the political transformation. As you have been told earlier, this duty free pass or Dastaga duty free tax or Dastaga was granted only to the English East India Company. But the company officials misused this Dastaga or duty free tax in order to evade the payment of customs tax. It created unequal competition between the merchants, local merchants in Bengal and the company officials. It created the main conflict between the Nawab of Bengal and the English. The one of the main reasons was the private interest of the English East India Company. These private officials used duty free tax or dastaga for the purchase of products from Bengal without paying customs tax. It created unequal competition between the mer local merchants in Bengal and the company officials. After the purchase of these products from Bengal, these company officials used to send these products to Europe. By selling these products in Europe, they got huge profit. And in addition to create an unequal competition between local merchants and the private officials in Bengal, it was also a heavy loss to the treasury, treasury of the Nawab. Secondly, the interest of the English East India Company, since the, pre, the, pre, the officials of the English East India Company, 
they were engaging in private trade by using dastaga and it was brought it to the attention of the english east india company but english east india company failed to take any effective measures against those officials who indulged in private trade a company english east india company was also equally responsible for the political transformation secondly what was the responsibility of the english east india company fortification fortification the english east india company engaged it in the fortification of fort william strengthening of the fortification of fort william despite repeated warnings the english east india company did not desist from this it was one of the main cause of dispute between the nawabs of bengal and the english east india company the company wanted to get a powerful position in bengal eliminating two rival forces which were these two rival forces one french and another dutch the english east india company wanted to eliminate these two powerful forces european forces from bengal so the company was also equally responsible one it did not punish the officials who engaged in private trade despite repeated request from the nawabs of bengal it did not desist from the fortification of fort william around calcutta thirdly whom to blame in the rest of local merchants and officials as you have been told earlier the officials first of all the commander in chief of the siraj daula murjafar murjafar was the commander in chief of the siraj daula's armed forces what was his interest despite protecting the nawab of bengal he gave more attention to his own personal interest to become the nawab it brought murjafar into the camp of the english with whom murjafar and robert clive made a conspiracy murjafar was brought into the conspiracy by the british by promising murjafar the nawabship of bengal only mirmudan and mohanlal remained loyal to the british during the course of the battle of plassey only two army commanders Mirmudan and Mohanlal. Only these officials remained loyal to the British. Murjafar, he was the commander in chief of the forces. He conspired with the British to become the Nawab. Likewise, Jagat Singh, the banker. one of the powerful banker of bengal umichand 
they had their own interest for the local merchants as well as the officials of the nawabs had their own interest this brought these local merchants and officials into the camp of the robert clive all these put it together the political transformation in bengal the interest of the officials of the english east india company the interest of the english east india company and the interest of local merchants and officials combined together what came into known as political transformation in bengal now moving to questions evaluate the importance of battle of plassey and bexar what did lead to political transformation in bengal examine the terms of the treaty of alahabad in what way the battle of plassey differ from the battle of bexar thank you dear students for watching this class thank you of literary snippet we usually know william shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of english literature but we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature and here i am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize a long sections from macbeth or king lear or julius caesar uh before they can go and sit for their school and or college exams but i am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors tolstoy for instance considered the writings of shakespeare to be and i quote crude immoral vulgar and senseless george bernard shaw absolutely loathed shakespeare as he did homer but perhaps no other criticism about shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller provided someone has told him the story earlier now this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true none of shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever they are all written using pre-existing materials pre-existing stories now does that diminish the stature of shakespeare as a dramatist well i'll leave that for you to decide see you in the next episode of literary snippets <laughs>